Hello and welcome to this lesson on the conservation of momentum, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding how momentum can be conserved in different situations. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can calculate momentum and impulse, link momentum to Newton's laws of motion, and then define and use the conservation of momentum. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be, we should be able to look at this part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.4.1.6 momentum. So as mentioned before, momentum of an object is dependent on two factors, the mass of the object and the velocity of the object. So momentum is equal to mass times by velocity, and momentum is similar to kinetic energy as it contains the same terms, because momentum is mass times by velocity, whilst kinetic energy is a half times by mass times by velocity squared. Now we can even use the equation of momentum to define momentum, and it's the product of the mass of the object and its velocity, and we can write the equation in symbol form by saying p equals m times by v and momentum is given the symbol of p because the first letter of the Latin translation momentum or impetus begins with the letter p. We also know that momentum is a vector quantity and the direction of momentum is shown by the sign of the calculated value either in the positive or in negative. So objects moving in opposite directions will have opposite mathematical signs. So this means momentum of objects can be changed by either altering the speed of the object or the direction of the object. So Unless it's stated in a question, you can decide which direction you want to assign the positive values to and which direction you want to assign the negative values to. Now, it's important to note that in collisions and explosions, the total momentum is conserved if the system is closed. So this means that the total momentum of the system before is equal to the total momentum of the system after. So in the before the interaction takes place, the total momentum then is equal to the total momentum of the system after the interaction has taken place. Now, this is derived from Newton's laws of motion. So what we can say is the total momentum before of object one and two must equal the total momentum after of one and two combined. Now the individual objects in the system can change their momentum in an event, but the overall momentum of the system must stay constant. So for example, if before the collision, object one had a momentum of two kilogram meters per second and object two had a momentum of zero kilogram meters per second, this gives us a total momentum of two kilogram meters per second. So what this tells us is after the collision that the total has to be the same two kilogram meters per second but now object one has one kilogram meter per second and object two has one kilogram meter per second so whilst the individual objects have changed momentum the overall total has stayed the same now for an individual object to change momentum to have an impulse a resultant force must be placed on the object now, we can actually split up this idea of total momentum before equals total momentum after to th think of it as the product of the mass and the velocity. So we're saying the mass times the t mass times by velocity before is going to equal the mass times by velocity afterwards. So one of the most fundamental laws of physics is the conservation of momentum. And this is actually based on Newton's third law of motion. So in any collision or explosion, any interaction, if no external force is applied on the system, the total momentum of the entire system is the same before as it is after. Now that's important because for a system of interacting objects, the total momentum in a specified direction remains constant as, as long as no external forces act on the sim, sim system. Now this principle can be used to predict the motion of interacting objects, which could be the at, which could be atoms bouncing off each other, cars crashing, or even colliding galaxies. So we can say this mathematically by saying total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards, or mass before times by velocity before equals mass after time by velocity afterwards. So we need to consider the total momentum of systems in a collision. So here we can observe a collision when objects hit each other and then move away from each other. So we know that the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards. Now we can say that this system, because there's no external forces acting on it, is a closed system. So we can say in this example that the momentum of A plus the momentum of B equals the momentum of AB after the collision. Now we can consider any system which has at least one dynamic object before contact a collision. Thank you.
Now it's important to note, like, like we said before, that the momentum of individual objects in the system can change, however the total momentum of the system must remain constant. Now as the total momentum remains constant, when the mass of the moving object increases after a collision, its velocity has to decrease, and vice versa. If the, if the mass of the moving object decreases after a collision, well then the velocity of the object has to increase. Now as the total momentum remains constant, when the two objects couple together in a collision the mass would increase so therefore the velocity would decrease and if an object split in a collision the mass decreases so therefore the velocity increases. So let's have a look at a following example. So here you've got an example of two objects hitting each other and then sticking together after the collision. So what's the velocity of the two balls stuck together after the collision? So the first step is to work out the momentum for the side of the collision you can do, which is the momentum before. So it's 2 times by 5 plus 4 times by 0, so it's 10 plus 0, so the momentum before is 10 kilogram meters per second. We can then say that the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards. So therefore the momentum afterwards must also be 10 kilogram meters per second. And then we can use the equation momentum equals mass times by velocity to work out the value that you want. So velocity is momentum over mass, so therefore it's 10 over 6, which is 1.7 meters per second. Now, in an explosion, the total momentum of the system is zero, because in an explosion, it's a motion where objects start at rest and then move away from each other, conserves momentum. So beforehand, the object is not moving, so it must have a total momentum of zero. So for the momentum to be conserved, the total momentum of the system throughout must also be zero. Now, after the explosion, both objects have a non-zero momentum because two objects are produced as a fragment of the original objects. Now, because we know the overall total momentum must be zero, well, they must add together to equal zero to conserve the momentum. Now, this occurs because the individual momentums are opposite signs of each other. This means that one momentum is a positive and the other is a negative. Now, this occurs because our two fragments are moving in opposite directions. As such, we can then give them opposite signs. So then adding them up will equal a value of zero, which will therefore conserve momentum. So for example, plus 20 kilogram meters per second minus 20 kilogram meters per second equals zero kilogram meters per second. So we can use this idea to say that the total momentum is zero and that we, therefore that the, the momentum afterwards is zero and therefore zero equals momentum of A plus momentum of B. So therefore momentum of A equals minus momentum of of B, we can then use this to work out the mass and the velocity of the objects. Now an application of this is considering a gun and a bullet. So the recoil in any explosion can be explained by this conservation of momentum. So before the gun explodes, the gun and the bullet are not moving, so therefore the system has no momentum. So this therefore means that as a result in this particular um, react interaction that the total momentum before is zero. So therefore, because we know that the momentum is conserved, that the total momentum afterwards must be zero. Now when the object is fired, the gun has a momentum and so does the bullet, but they then got to cancel out to give a value of zero. So what we then got to say is that they must therefore be going in opposite directions, because when they add up they must cancel through to give a value of zero, so the gun goes in the opposite direction to the bullet. So we say the gun has a recoil. Now the gun has a much larger mass than the bullet, and we know that ma momentum is mass times by velocity, so the gun must have a lower velocity than the bullet to have the same magnitude of momentum because it has a higher mass. So the objects need to have the same momentum to cancel out and give a value of zero. So what we can say is that the momentum of the bullet equals the momentum of the gun, so that the mass of the bullet times by the velocity of the bullet equals the mass of the gun times by the velocity of the gun. But remember, one of the values has to be a negative because it's, it's total and equal to zero. So what we can therefore say is that one is a plus and one is a minus because they're moving in different directions. Now we observe this effect in all guns and in all explosions. So let's have a look at an example. What is the velocity of the of the bomb fragment one in this particular example? So the first step is to work out the momentum for a fragment of the explosion that you can do. So in this case we can say 7 times by 2 equals 14 kilogram meters per second. 
Now, because we know it's an explosion and we know that the momentum before is zero, but then the momentum afterwards is zero, so therefore we must say that fragment one will equal fragment two with one being a negative. So therefore, if the momentum of fragment two is plus 14, the momentum of fragment one is minus 14. We can then use the, moment, with the equation momentum is mass times by velocity to work out velocity by saying velocity is equal to momentum over mass, it's minus 14 over 3, it's minus 4.7 meters per second. This negative value indicates it's moving in the opposite direction to the other fragment. Now, when two objects in a system interact or collide, they transfer two quantities, momentum and kinetic energy. Now, momentum is always conserved in all collisions. This is because there's nothing else in which momentum can be converted to. But kinetic energy is usually not conserved in a collision because it can be transformed into other forms of energy. Work can be done into forming objects in collisions or be transferred to the internal energy of the surroundings. Of course, the total amount of energy remains constant as prescribed by the principle of conservation of energy. But this fact leads to two types of collisions, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. Elastic collisions are when the total momentum and total kinetic energy is conserved in the collision. Can elastic collisions are collisions where no energy is lost to the internal energy of the surroundings. It's a closed system. Now, inelastic collisions are when the total momentum is conserved, but the total kinetic energy is not conserved in a collision. So as you can see here, in an elastic collision, the momentum is conserved, the total energy is conserved, and the total kinetic energy is conserved. But in an inelastic collision, the momentum is conserved, the total energy is conserved, but the total kinetic kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, in reality, there are no true elastic collisions which occur in the universe. However, the collisions between particles can be considered elastic. In addition, low-speed collisions between objects which cause no damage can be considered elastic. An example of this would be snooker balls hitting against each other or a low-speed car crash. Now, let's have a look at an example of how to answer a question on an inelastic collision. So an object of mass 8,000 kilograms moving at 8 meters per second collides with a stationary object of mass 5,000 kilograms. The objects separate after the collision. The 8,000 kilogram object moves at the speed of 1 meter per second. The 5,000 kilogram object also moves. Calculate the loss of kinetic energy in the collision. So the first thing to do is to work out the momentum afterwards and the momentum before to therefore work out our missing velocity. So the momentum before is 8,000 times by 3 and 5,000 times by 0. And the momentum afterwards is 8,000 times by 1 plus 5,000 times by the velocity. So therefore we can say that 24,000 equals 8,000 plus 5,000 V. So therefore 5,000 V equals 16,000. So therefore V is 16,000 over 5,000, which is 3.2 meters per second. At that point, we can work out the kinetic energy before by doing a half mv squared for each moving object and the kinetic energy afterwards by doing a half mv squared of each moving object. So that gives us a kinetic energy before of 36,000 joules and a kinetic energy afterwards of 29,600 joules. Sorry, 30, sorry 360,000 before. So as a result, what we can then say is that the total energy loss is the kinetic energy before minus the kinetic energy afterwards. So at that point, we do 36,000 over 29,600. So therefore, we've lost 6,400 joules in that inelastic collision. That energy has been dissipated to the internal energy of the surroundings or it's gone into deforming the objects. So what have we learned in today's lesson? That momentum is mass times by velocity, that there's the conservation of linear momentum, and that impulse is the change in momentum. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate momentum and impulse, link momentum to Newton's laws of motion, and define and use the conservation of momentum. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on the conservation of momentum, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.